So 3.2.1 protocols. So show understanding of why a protocol is essential for communications between computers. This is what we have to actually look into and then show understanding of how protocol implementation can be viewed as a stack where each layer has its own functionality. We'll look into it and then we will discuss a protocol which is the most important protocol as far as internet is concerned and it is called TCP IP. IP is basically the addressing of every computer or node over the internet or any device over the internet. Whereas TCP is the protocol, we will look into it. It's a protocol suit as in it's a combination of different protocols in layers and then these layers may have sub protocols, sub layers or whatever we will discuss about it. So understanding of the application of TCP IP protocol suit when a message is sent from one host to another. So we will have to actually discuss that what happens when message starts moving from one host to another host and then we will look into a, a BitTorrent as a separate topic and uh, show awareness of other protocols. So we have to discuss besides TCP, IP, HTTP, FTP, POP3, and SMTP and their purposes. So let us start, let us start with key terms. These are the key terms that we will have to actually deal with when we are discussing protocol. So the first term is basically the protocol itself. Protocol, what is a protocol? Protocol is basically a set of rules which when two machines or two devices follow, they enable themselves to communicate with each other. So protocols are preset rules, means when two devices try to contact and deliver and receive data, send and receive data, transmit and receive data, what they do, they basically first set rules that according to what rules we will be sending and receiving data from each other. So that is basically the protocol. So it's a set of rules, a set of rules governing governing the communications between two or more devices over a network. This network might be internet or local area network also referred to as preset rules. All right. So the both the sender and the receiver have to then abide by the rules. So then that there comes the first sort of protocol, which is quite popular. You might have noticed it while you are writing the name of a website, it is called hypertext. Hypertext, it's a single word, transfer protocol. All right, and this is used by the browsers to browse the website, we will look into it. When the data move over the internet, Devices basically first divide the data into number of packets, pieces. And these divisions are referred to as packets. So it's a message. It's a part of the whole data needs to be sent or received over a network. All right. So it's a message which 
which is a split of data into smaller groups group uh, of bits all right and then uh, there is segment segment is also a piece of divided data in part and mostly use term while discussing tcp ip's uh, transport layer right so we will see that what is the tcp ip transport layer so th this term segment is basically the same as packet but since it is being used in a different uh, context so we call it segment then there is a protocol called ftp file transfer protocol this protocol basically enables us to handle files over the network like you might be using cloud and when you place a file over there you can rename it you can edit it you can delete it you can move between the folders you can create folders you can download and upload whatever the operation that you are performing over the file which are actually over the cloud is basically because of this ftp protocol so this basically helps and then we have got smtp this is simple file transfer protocol all right this basically help us to send the data email data send email data you will look into it and then uh, we have got M I M E mine. This is basically multi purpose internet mail extension. Now, basically, when you send email using SMTP, you can only send using text. But if you have got more data, more different type of data, which is basically uh, data which is in sound, which is in video, other than text, that then we use this multi-purpose internet mail extension. So it basically helps us to send. It's a protocol that help us to send attachments containing multimedia files. Okay, and then we have got POP. POP is uh, basically post office protocol. Which help us to receive email. All right. 
SMTP and MIME basically are used to send the data, and POP is used to receive the data. Now there are two newer versions. Sometimes it is POP three, and sometimes it is uh, POP four. And this, these three are used when you are having an email client. Email client like Microsoft Outlook that you are using. But if you are accessing your email using a browser, using Gmail or MSN Live or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, in that case, the protocol is IMAP, I-M-A-P. Internet message access protocol. Internet message access protocol. This protocol help us to check the email in the browser without using email client, separate email client as an application. All right. And then there are terms, normally those terms are host. Host is basically a computer or device that can communicate with other computer or devices. It's a device or computer that can communicate over the network with others, all right? So it's a host. And then there's a term, host to host. What does it mean? Host to host is, is a protocol used by DCP when communicating between those two devices. So it's a protocol. which is used by TCP IP protocol <coughs> when communicating. All right, communicating between Two devices. So as of now, you would have a good idea that these protocols are all about making communications possible. All right. So these are about making communications possible. Now, these are the terminologies. So you would have to have a good grip of these protocol terminologies and key terms. These are key terms. That you will have to actually keep in mind without these key terms, you will uh, not be able to score full marks. All right. Now let's start uh, studying TCP IP protocol and the need for the TCP IP protocol. Let us discuss about those. All right, hold on. Last protocol is host to host. Do you want to So please show host to host protocol. Host to host. Host to host is a protocol which is used by TCP when communicating between the two devices. Now, what is TCP? TCP itself is a protocol. So TCP has got sub protocols which are used by TCP IP protocol suit. That is why we call it suit. All right. It's a collection. So at one stage, this uh, TCP IP will be using this host to host protocol as well. You don't have to pay a lot of attention to this host to host protocol because it might be referred to but the thing is that uh, uh, this is not mentioned in the syllabus. 
it might be referred to that is why i have uh, made this term but but the host the term host is basically very common all right so let us start now basically a tcp ip protocol why do we have to have the protocol what is the need of the protocol so when communicating over the networks it is essential that some of the protocol is used by the sender and the receiver otherwise it will not be possible for both parties to communicate so both parties need to agree the protocol being used to ensure successful communications take place all right in uh, this discussion oh, sorry in previous discussion we discussed about parity we discussed parity in as we discussed checksum in as under verification so what basically happens when the data is received someone at the receiver's end checks basically whether the data that is received is all right or it got corrupted so how they will receive they will how they will check they will check using parity now parity is of two types a byte parity and the block parity and there are two sub types whether the parity will be even parity or odd parity so these things needs to be decided between the sender and the receiver before and when sender sends the data they might be using block parity but odd get the idea so they will first decide that so parity checking is a way of determining whether data was transmitted correctly or not and if it is not then receiver will tell us the sender with this method it was essential to agree the protocol even hai or odd hai without agreeing this protocol it would be impossible to use parity checking all right so this is one of the protocol many different protocols exist since there are several activities taking place over the internet so every different type of activity would be requiring different protocol i just tried to explain few of the terms and by those terms we had an idea that when we are browsing we need http when we are using email using a client we need smtp mime and pop but when we are emailing or using our email which is in the browser we don't need either of these three rather we will be using imap so different protocols for different type of communications or different type of activities over the internet that is how it works so let us start with tcp ip protocols this particular protocol is a four layer protocol okay so topology means we will be discussing topology shortly topology means that how the whole system is physically made so in a network we are there is one host and there is another host i told you that host is any machine which is enabled enabled in terms of communication it can receive data it can send data and it can communicate with others using the protocol so so the devices inside these uh, networks are router we will discuss about the routers separately so since we are only paying attention to tcp ip uh, ip protocol suit sir ye yes 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 obviously i always do that so now what is this tcp ip protocol suit so this is a four layer structure for tcp ip protocol so this suit has got four layers application layer transport layer internet layer or this internet layer is also called network layer and then we have got link layer or link network layer whatever that you want to call it so this is a four layer protocol so when we send data we send data down from application to link layer and then it goes further and when it is received it is received in the back order so from application it goes to transport layer from transport it goes to internet and then internet to link layer and then using whatever the underlying medium if it is ethernet lan if it is wireless wan or it is fiber optic whatever that physical medium is used and then the data is delivered when data is delivered from link layer it goes to internet layer to transport layer and to the application and what are we 
doing we are just having that a look at the application where we are tapping the data to send and we are we are receiving the data so basically this is just application we are interacting with but application is actually interacting with other further protocols underneath it so application goes to transport layer using layers breaks the process down into manageable self contained modules all right if there would be a single protocol it would have become very tough for the engineers to manage something big like internet so what they have done they have broken down the protocol into number of layers this breaking of layers into parts is called decomposition which makes it easier to develop and easier to make software and hardware which are compatible for example let's say you want to have an alu ka paratha all right so there are two ways or maybe a burger so let's say if you want to have a burger you have layers all right bun then patty then vegetables then salad whatever sauces you put all them together so let's say someone doesn't like this sell it so they will take it out because it is separate layer but what if your mother puts everything together in the flour and she just make it one thing and then cooks it for you in that case since everything is just mashed up it is all together you can never take one thing out so it will become hard for you to take out mashed sell it from that so this is what exactly used to be done earlier so every company used to make a hardware had its own protocol so let's say i am a company an old a company i have made a modem i have defined my own protocols and my modem is manufactured according to my protocols so if someone likes to communicate using the modem that i have made they have to have the same modem of mine on both ends so only communication will be enabled if these two parties old computer a and old computer b have the same modem from the same manufacturer later when standardization happened the standardization of protocol went to third parties government back third parties these third parties define their own protocols and they have broken down the layers now they instructed every modem manufacturer not to make their own protocols follow these protocols and then also they define that if you are manufacturing modem you will be tackling with this particular layer if you are developing a software or other you will better be dealing with this layer so not everyone would have to deal with all the layers but only the one layer which corresponds to their manufacturing activity so software it's a different layer to deal with hardware it's a different layer and then what class of hardware are different layers to deal with so that is how instead of making your own protocols manufacturers started making the devices according to the layers and they were not allowed to change any layer they were actually be given everything which is what which was in uh, uh, standard like ieee or osi so these were two organizations who standardized it and then according to those standard they had to uh, manufacture that is how no matter what manufacturer is manufacturing you can use it without being worried whether this device will be able to communicate with other devices so get the idea so from personalization individuality to the globalization all right so that is why decomposition of the protocol suit was necessary all right so when sending data across the network or internet the layers are used in order layer 4 to layer 1 so let's say we are uh, discussing in a way that we are receiving the data 
not sending the data. So from layer four, to, it goes to layer three, to layer two, then to layer one. And at, at layer one, we are basically using the application. So let's start with application layer. Let's say I am using an application. The application layer contains all the programs that exchange the data. Let's say WhatsApp or a browser. So let's say a web browser or WhatsApp, maybe a server application. It sends files or data or message to the transport layer. So from application, it goes to transport layer. Remember, these are software. All right, these are software. This layer allows application to access the services used in other layers, application layer. This layer allows applications to access the services used in other layers and also defines the protocols that any app uses to follow the exchange of data. So it means that application layer has got further protocols in it. All right, so this HTTP that we have just discussed, FTP, SMTP, POP, and IMAP, they all are working under application layer. Why IMAP? Because you are working under the browser. Why HTTP? Because browser is working according to HTTP rules. Why FTP? Because whatever the application that you are using, let's say you are having a client of Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive. So that client is application, but it is making use of what? FTP. Maybe you have got Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, and then that Outlook will be using SMTP and POP or maybe MIME. All right. So you need to understand that application layer has further protocols inside it, little protocols. So those protocols are HTTP, FTP, SMTP. Pop. Let's just confine ourselves to the protocol which are mentioned in your syllabus. So it is worth revisiting the terms packet and router. So packets are what? Packets are split up parts of a complete message or file in bits, which are predefined size. Okay. So messages are split up into small groups of bits called packets. For example, a web page would be split up into number of packets before sending over to the internet. All right. And then what is the router? So everything which is moving over the internet is basically in the form of packets. So a big thing is divided into number of packets. A router is used to transmit packets of data. As you can see over here, a host is converting the message into packets. And these packets are then using the router is being transferred from one router to other, to third, to fourth, to fifth, until it reaches the host B. All right, so a router is used to transmit packets of data. Routers contain connections to many other routers. And there is routing internet protocol. So it defines the mechanism of routers interconnectivity. Even over the internet, all of the routers which enable the internet basically are bound by their own routing inter-messaging internet protocol. Okay, get the idea. So every router over the internet knows where the other routers are and how much the traffic they are dealing with so that they could conveniently send it. These routers are like a traffic police sergeant at a roundabout. So they are in connection with other sergeants at other roundabouts. So if one of the roundabout is getting congested, so that sergeant will then redirect the traffic from this roundabout from another way. So that congestion does not increase on that router. So that is how it works. They all are traffic sergeants standing at one roundabout. Let's discuss HTTP. Now, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is probably the most important application layer protocol. Okay.
all right http is probably the most important application layer protocol essentially this protocol underpins the world wide web so world wide web is being enabled using this it is used when for example fetching an html document fetching an html document means you are you are, you are trying to open up a website in the browser from the web server this makes use of hyperlinks hyperlinks are rules for transferring the data over the internet all right http is a client server protocol client server means that there is a server which is serving websites their data and files and we are client which we who are basically opening the website so http is a client server protocol means request messages are sent out to the web servers which then respond and send us, send us the websites http protocol defines the format of the message sent and received so all the messages which are being sent and received are basically using http it defines the format according to which the messages are made the web browser which is part of the application layer uh, obviously we know about it initiates the web page request and also converts html into the format which can be displayed over user screen and can display through their media player if it is a sound or a video or an image that is being sent first it will be converted according to http it will be received according to http and then it will be managed so that it could be shown to the user who intend to open this website so basically what happens when a browser tries to access a website so the user enters a website address in the url bar http transmits the request from the application layer to the transport layer which is tcp all right so http is basically transferring the message using http to the transport layer which is tcp the tcp creates data packets at the lan card level and send them to the destination all right breaking up of a message into packet is done by the lan card or what do you call it mac media access controller card so what basically happens that whenever you send a message that message is meant for an ip that ip address basically is the address of every single device which is over the internet now where does the system of internet hold all these ip addresses the 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 address that you basically use to access the website is basically called a domain domain so that domain is basically associated with an ip address the way i might have saved my father's number in my cell phone with his name or maybe the word father so i have associated one domain with an ip the cell phone number is the ip and the name of my father or the word father itself is basically the domain so we use domain like zaconweb.com so that zaconweb.com would have an ip associated so that the router could be located where this ip is present or the server which is holding this ips related website is present so that we need to have a dns domain name services server which is holding this database that is basically defining that which ip is which domain is present at what ip so computer when access another computer the, the ip is the only way so domains names to be resolved into ip addresses so dns server stores the database of urls and matching ip addresses the dns server uses the domain name typed into the browser to look up the ip addresses of the appropriate website the tcp sends back an acknowledgement all right so tcp is a transport layer so if you do remember arqs automatic repeat request and all 
those are working on transport layer level. So the TCP sends back an acknowledgement. Okay. So host to host protocol works that way. Now, once the communication has been established, the request is made, DNS has given the IP, HTTP has taken it over the uh, uh, over to the TCP IP layer and TCP layer is then uh, receiving acknowledgement back. So the web server sends the web page back in HTML format to the browser. So it is a client server thing. The browser interprets the page and displays over the screen, displays it over the screen. So what basically happens that you enter the address, that address according to HTTP message converts and then it reaches out to DNS and DNS gives the IP and at that IP the request is made at the transport layer. The transport layer is basically TCP layer, one of the TCP layer. And then acknowledgement is arrived. Then the website in HTML format according to HTTP messages arrives. And then the browser under the control of HTTP protocol interprets that website and shows it to us. So that is how it works. And then it is FTP, file transfer protocol. So file transfer protocol is a network protocol used when transferring files from one computer or device to another via the internet or any other network. So file transfer protocol enable us to deal with the files which are not physically present or our computer rather it is present somewhere else. The way we are handling the files in our own operating system. It is uh, similar to HTTP and SMTP, but file transfer protocol only task is the application protocol for the transfer of files over the network. So it enables us to transfer the file only. So it is a kind of SMTP thing, but it is for files. Web browsers can be used to connect to a FTP address and uh, these files can be manipulated using the browser. So F, what is FTP file transfer protocol that helps us to handle the files over a disk which is far away from us. So then there comes anonymous FTP. Anonymous FTP in short is basically you can access the file without username and password. Anonymous. That is how it works. So anonymous FTP allows a user to access file without the need to identify themselves to the FTP server. So FTP server just serves the file. This is like when we download a file, what we do? We just click and download the file. We do not tell them who we are. We just, uh, we just download that. That is anonymous FTP thing. Then FTP commands. Nowadays we are used to with the graphical user interface. So we do not get indulged into the commands. Rather we prefer to click, drag, drop, right click, rename, type, that's, that sort of operations. So, but there are FTP protocol commands, which you can use to manipulate the files. And then FTP server, FTP server is basically the server, which is holding up all the files, FTP protocols and under the FTP protocol, it managing, it is managing and interpreting all the commands and doing whatever you want to do with your files. You know about it because you might have used clouds over the internet, maybe iCloud, maybe Google Drive, maybe OneDrive, whatever. As soon as you approach the FTP server, a session would be started. And until you log out or you close that particular tab over the browser, that session remains in place. So I hope that you got the idea. Now, in application layer, next thing is SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. I told you that this protocol is basically used to send the text files. When you are sending the email. So simple mail transfer protocol is a text-based protocol when sending emails. It is sometimes referred to as a push protocol. Why push protocol? Push protocols are those which open a session with the server and they keep open it. And whenever they like, they just send out the files. So for every time when you are sending the file, they do not open the session, send the file, close the session. Push protocols are those which are keep opening it. And whenever they require, they just send the file. So bra, bra, the server is basically having few ports open for them and data might be received at any given time. 
that is called push protocol. Whereas there is a pull protocol as well. So pull protocol is when you find the notification yourself. So you don't have to actually log in every time to get the idea. So if your application is showing those little uh, numbers over an application, let's say if it is Outlook Express icon, and if this is four, it means that the four emails are received. So it means that Outlook client is maintaining a pull protocol that is basically keeping the connection open. And as soon as there is an email, server notifies you. So push protocol, when you are pushing the data to server, pull protocol, when you are bringing in the data from the server. So pull protocol servers is letting you know that there is data and push protocol when you are letting server know that there is data in both of the cases the connection remains open so smtp referred to as a push protocol in other words a client opens a connection to server and keeps the connection active all the time the client then uploads a new email to the server whenever it is required since SMTP is text-based only, it does not handle binary files. What are binary files? Image files, sound files, and any other media file which are not actually the text file. If an email contains attachment made up of images, video, and music, then we use multi-purpose internet mail extension, mine. Multi-purpose internet mail extension, here. We use this one. So this enables us to send uh, multimedia files. Then comes this MIME and IMAP are not part of the syllabus, so I have just put it there so that we could comparatively study. Now, post office protocol, POP3 or 4, other versions basically. Internet message access protocol, IMAP, and POP, post office protocols, are basically the protocols used when receiving emails from the email server. These are known as pull protocols. These are pull because they are bringing in the data. Post office protocol or IMAP are bringing in the data. SMTP and MIME are sending the data. So SMTP and MIME are push. POP3 and IMAP are pull, pull protocols. All right. So now IMAP uh, is a more recent protocol. Uh, it is basically newer. It is the latest one. But both have uh, really been uh, used by the HTTP protocol. So they are always there. They are a necessity and they are being used mostly by the email clients. Okay. So now they might ask you for the difference between the POP3 and IMAP. So you need to tell that POP3 only works with the client, whereas IMAP is being used by the browsers only. POP3 does not keep the server and client in sync. So only when you basically uh, download the email, open up the email, then oh, that email is downloaded and shown to you. All right, and uh, when the file is downloaded in POP3, it is cleaned up. It is deleted from the server. So since it is downloaded using POP3, it is cleaned from the server. Whereas in IMAP, when you open a file and you open the file in your local application, even then, since it is IMAP, it keeps the original file over the server. So this is the main difference when in POP3, if you access the file, file is deleted from the server, and it is in your local machine. If you delete it over here, it is gone. But if it is IMAP, you do download the file and it is there as well. Then comes transport layer or TCP IP layer. Okay. The transport layer has got TCP, transmission control protocol. The transport layer, you can see that whatever we have discussed until now is application layer. Now, there is transport layer. Transport layer comes after and it is having TCP, transmission control protocol with it. Now, the transport layer regulates the network connection. So it is basically controlling the network connection. This is where the data is broken up, broken up into packets. I told you that data is being converted, a message is being converted into packets. So 
packets are made at the transport layer level which are then sent to internet using ip so the transport layer ensures that packets arrive in sequence without errors by swapping acknowledgement and retransmitting if you do remember the, that arq from your o level and as so this is basically arq is implemented at transport layer is it make sure that all the tap, all the packets are arrived they are arrived and they are in sequence if the, the packet was not sent properly then it will be retransmitted and things like that so the transport layer ensures that packets are arrive in sequence without any errors by swapping acknowledgement and retransmitting packets if they become lost or corrupted the main protocol associated with transport layer is tcp transmission control protocol okay there are other protocols as well but we will just consider tcp all right so what is transmission control protocol tcp tcp is responsible for the safe delivery of the message as i just said by creating sufficient packets for transmission so transport layer is basically using tcp protocol as a major protocol and it is basically responsible for making packets out of the, out of the given data it uses positive acknowledgements with retransmission which means it is automatically resending a data packet if the receiver has not used it sometimes we call it arq automatic repeat request which is using a timeout system if the acknowledgement has not arrived the sender will retransmit the data sort of that tcp is also connection oriented since so established end to end connection with the host so one host when it is connected to another host is basically utilizing tcp tcp is often referred to as host to host so get the idea so host to host is basically tcp itself the term host has been uh, used previously in previous slide this refers to a computer or device that can communicate with another computer or device which is again a host host can include clients like us the application that we are using the browsers these are clients and the servers which are serving all of it so it can send receive data provide services or applications theek okay. hai so this is basically tcp ip protocol which is making use of tcp as a major uh, tcp is basically implemented at transport layer and the protocol which is being used over here is transmission control protocol now after transport then comes the internet layer or sometimes it is called data link layer you might have different terminologies in different books so this is basically internet layer network layer or basically data link layer you might see such names so let's see network layer network layer internet layer or data link layer it is using ip it is using ip transport layer is using tcp and this one is using ip the internet layer identifies the intended network and host which network and which host we need to connect to the common protocol at this layer is internet protocol the concept of ip version 4 and ip version 6 these are associated with it but we have discussed those in uh, as communications in 1.2 chapter anyways in this network layer it identifies and moves traffic across the local segments local segments of internet all right the parts of internet and it basically uh, does it using the ip addresses so it can can in, it, it it encapsulates ip packets into frames for transmission so now you need to understand the term frame is being used sometimes sometimes it is segment sometimes it is packet so that, that basically depends so if you are talking about local area network or at this stage in network layer sometimes it, it is referred to be a segment sometimes jo hai it is uh, referred to be as a packet 
sometimes basically it is referred to be as a, a frame so packets are known as frames at the data link layer which is this datagrams at the internet layer and segments at transport layer so packets are referred to as frames at the data link layer over here datagrams at the internet layer which we will discuss later and segments at the transport layer so that really does not uh, make any difference as far as your syllabus is concerned so let's just uh, go on with it so the network or data link layer identifies and moves traffic across local segments encapsulate ip packets into frames for transmission maps ip address to physical mac address so ip address is not just the ip address for example at my home if a letter arrives and nobody's name mentioned there no name is mentioned there it means that all six people in the home or eight people in the home are eligible to have that letter until unless that letter gets opened we would have no idea that this letter is for whom so now what basically happens that that ip address is like house address and this mac address a mac id or lan card id is basically the person like everyone at home has uh, this cell phone they all are connected using what the router so this router is making sure that whatever i am accessing over the internet comes to me and whatever others are accessing goes to them so every packet is basically marked my cell phone has got its own mac my computer has got its own mac every device has got a mac address bluetooth mac address wifi mac address so these packets are ip fight and then mac fight mac address is associated at this particular so that when the data arrives back it could come to me now it's just my home think about my neighborhood think about my city think about my province think about my country think about so many countries so every every packet which is flowing over the internet has got an ip and at that ip a mac address so the uh let's read it again the network data link layer identifies and moves traffic across local segments and encapsulate ip packets into frames for transmission means with packets maps ip address to mac or physical lan card addresses and ensures correct protocols are being followed the physical network layer specify requirements for the hardware to be used for the network okay the data link layer identifies network protocols in packet headers now every packet has got a header and footer header tells that from where the packet is coming the footer tells where it is going while there is another part in it data that is keeping the data so the summary of the ip functions would become then ensure correct routing of packets of the data over the internet so this is basically happening at this so it is ensuring it this layer is ensuring it responsible for protocols when communicating between the networks take a packet from the transport layer and add its own header to it which will include ip address of both the sender and the receiver every packet has got three parts header footer head tail origination destination origination ip destination ip and origination mac address is also put in there then comes ethernet protocols which are also part of it we will discuss ethernet in a separate topic which is basically lan okay so that is another topic which is uh, basically 3.2.3 so application layer transport layer internet layer 
and then link layer. So that link layer is basically at which we are connected to the devices which enable us to send the data physically. So that is how it happens. Internet network link. This link layer is basically is using the Ethernet, the LAN card itself. From the LAN card, this Ethernet protocol is taking it up, moving it onto the network, which is basically the network of uh, Internet. It might be fiber optic, it might be satellite, it might be GSM, whatever. So until there, it is network layer. Afterward, then it is link layer. And link layer is basically connected to the physical medium, which is transporting the data at the link layer. It is Ethernet protocol. OK, so that's about it. TCP IP protocol suit, it is made up of basically four layers, which are application layer. Then we have got, after application layer, we have got uh, transport layer, then internet layer, and then the network link layer. Now we have to study that how basically we transfer, when we transfer the data, how basically data gets transferred from one uh, layer to another layer. So it is simple that from basically uh, application layer, data gets transferred to transport layer from when it is being sent from transport layer it goes to internet layer and then the link layer link layer transports the data when it arrives at the destination it is transport layer uh, sorry uh, link layer once again so from link layer it goes up to internet layer and then up to transport layer then up to basically application layer so users are connected with application layer only and whatever that is happening underneath is basically done by the software itself and at the link layer bottom level that bottom level layer is basically dealing with what the physical internet medium it might be fiber optic it might be whatever but before that there is an ethernet protocol that ethernet protocol is basically the protocol which is being followed by your mac cards and all okay so when we will discuss local area network, which is 3.2.3. We will discuss about it in detail. So you might be asked that how the data has been transferred. So this, these are four layers, one, two, three, four. When the data is being sent, it passes through one, two, three, four layers. Then it is sent along the actual medium. It arrives at the destination. And at the destination, it is again layer four then three, then two, and then one. At one, we are having the application. So user is actually what, whatever the communication that is being done by the user, users have got this idea that it is being sent and being received, but there are underneath so several protocols that you need to understand. And this was basically the 